It's me, Timmy Fires Guy, and welcome to episode 6 of Back in the Day. In today's episode, we are going to do what I like to call a Philadelphia Phantoms Power Hour. And in this video, we are going to remember the Philadelphia Phantoms. But before we do that, here is a brief history. In 1996, in 1996, 97, Philadelphia Phantoms had a regular season in the city of Philadelphia. In 97, 98, the Philadelphia fans captured their first Calder Cup at the Spectrum. And fast forwarding to the year 2005 when the Philadelphia fans captured their second Calder Cup. Against the Chicago Wolves. Some of the Phantoms were playing and played most of their games in Oak Row 5 at the, Wells, at the Wells Fargo Center, which was known as the Wachovia Center back then. And most of their games at the Wachovia Spectrum. The Philadelphia Phantoms. Stayed in Philly from 96 to 2009-2010. Where in 2009-2010, they moved out of Philly and became the Adirondack Phantoms located in Grand Falls, New York at the Grand Falls Civic Center. They stayed in Wentz Falls from 2010 to 2014. In 2014, they moved to Allentown and became the Beehive Valley Phantoms. And they still are the Beehive Valley Phantoms today. Now, we're going to travel back in time to one of the Philadelphia Phantoms. We're the show of fans. So get ready for a great video, folks, because we're going to show you some random Philadelphia fans, commercials, clips, whatever. So here we go, folks. Get ready for the Philadelphia fans power out. the Calder Cup. Listen to this crowd, it's wonderful. American League, National League, whenever you do something like this, it's a thrill, and the fans appreciating their team. Twenty-five seconds left. Twenty seconds. 15. 15. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the 62-year history of the American Hockey League, the Calder Cup comes to Philadelphia. There's Bill Barber. And of course, Bob Clark and Paul Holmgren and Terry Murray and Frank Maselli and assistant coach Mike Feathers, chairman of the board, Ed Snyder, all of them. And this crowd has just gone berserk. Nobody going for the, the subway or the parking lot. And St. John at the left, a beaten club, but I tell you, they, they played tough, hard-nosed hockey 
And it was not an easy victory, although the Flanders did it in six and won easily tonight. They played hard, they rubbed it in your nose, and they did everything that Bill Stewart wanted, but the Flanders were the better team. And you're getting to see one of those two wonderful moments of a team going through a whole season and accomplishing it to the top of the mountain. There ain't nothing like winning. No. And as you can see there, oh man. At center ice, the St. John Flames are awaiting the ceremonial shaking of the hands. And the and first in line is Bill Stewart. Bill Stewart, classy guy. Done a great job with his St. John Flames team. As now, after the celebration, here comes the Philadelphia Phantoms to shake hands with the St. John Flames. That's a great tradition. Oh, nothing like it. And Bill nothing Stewart, like it in sport. Bill Stewart's a winner. Well, Steve, I just thought that I've broadcast three championships, two Stanley Cup and one Calder Cup, and Bill Barber's been a part of all three. Done a great job with this team. Done a great job. And Bill Barber hugging. Mike Stuthers. But much credit to that St. John team. And this is, uh, Steve, uh, there's no tradition in sports better than this. They beat hell out of one another for six games, and now they say, well done. Well, you've got to understand that both teams worked hard to get to where they were and let the better team win. And that's what's happened here with the Philadelphia Phantoms and the St. John Flames respect that. Bill Barber at the end of the line. Uh, give me an MVP. Is there a question? Well, I think there's a, you know, there's a couple of guys you got to look at. Montgomery, of course, you got to look at Manilek, but I just think the guy that came to stop the puck every night has to, to get the nod because Neil Little has just been fabulous, especially when you look at you've been outshot in every game. Nobody's gone home, not a soul. Why would you? Now Bill Barber shaking hands. And there was uh, Wiesenberg and uh, Rocky Thompson to get a little hug. And there's another little one there. They whispered one another's ear. That was McDonald who played so hard. And now Clark Will. There's uh, O'Brien along with Boucher, the goaltender. Cherish it, my friends. It comes along so rarely. And Mike Stuthers blowing kisses to the crowd. And this is not the end of it. We still have the presentation of the Calder Cup. Well, I got the hats already. <laughs> I got the tags flying. They don't care. Look at Wiesenberg, Montgomery. They're just having a ball right now. And you know, we thought you win it wherever you can, but you look back now, it was appropriate and fitting that it should end here with this crowd setting an attendance record. Now they've got the two trophies out there, the MVP and the Calder. There's Bruce Coles, who got it going tonight, too, with a breakaway goal, make it two to nothing. I'm sure going out on the ice now is Dave Andrews, the president of American Hockey. He's got to be thrilled, first of all, by the series and by the crowd and the attendance on television. just announced that they're going to present the Calder Cup, Dave Andrews, to the captain, John Stevens. Well, he's waited a long time through a lot of teams and a lot of leagues. Well, he's already won two cups with Springfield and Hershey, so everything happens in threes. We don't have the PA feed, so Dave Andrews is making that presentation now, the president of the American League. And again, the last time the finals were played by a Philadelphia team was 1939 by the Ramblers. So it's been 60 years since they were in the finals. This is the closest they ever came. And the first time the Calder Cup comes to Philadelphia. Really didn't have far to move, just an hour and a half from Hershey. Worked out very nicely, I would say. Mike Manilak is the MVP of the Mike playoffs. Mike Manilak. Well, we mentioned Mac Montgomery Manilak and Neil Little. And Mike Manilak ends up as the leading scorer. 14 goals and 20 assists for 34 points. You think he might be wearing a different uniform next fall? Well, you got to give him a look, Gene. Yep. You got to give him a look when you get that kind of offense, especially at this time of year. When you come to play even more at this time of year, you deserve a look. 
And now John Stevens will get the Calder Cup. Boy, that's got a great history. Frank Calder, who was the first president of the National Hockey League and is primarily responsible to bringing hockey to places like Chicago and Detroit. And there he's getting, look at that. You know, you talk about the camaraderie of this club. <laughs> they got their championship hats on and they didn't yeah, take off the, I took the, the, the tags. The yeah, like I mentioned, they got the tags going there and everything. <laughs> Sixty second time the Calder Cup. John Stevens. And he well, wants Peter White with him. And Jamie hey, Hewitt. Hewitt. Oh no, I'm sorry, Sean McCosh and uh, yeah. Peter White. Now the place will go bonkers when they take the skate. There ain't nothing like it. I'm going to repeat myself. <laughs> Doesn't matter what level it is. There's so many stories. Jimmy Montgomery coming back from Europe, having three hat tricks in the playoffs, and getting five game-winning goals. Mike Maniluk, a gift from uh, the Worcester Ice Cats to lead the playoffs in scoring. And Neil Little coming into his own and playing brilliantly throughout the year. Well, the crowd's certainly responding to this championship Calder Cup team. Jamie Hewitt passing it now. That's Paul Healy who, who caught the goal late in the game. Oh. <laughs> Frank Darby, who had a great year, all-star. 42 goals, 45 assists for 87 points. He'll pass it on to Mike Mantle, like the most valuable player in the playoffs. Another guy that you could see in a different uniform, Jeff Blank. Sean O'Brien out of Princeton. Oh, he goes back a little bit. Turns the tide, goes back the other way, Gene. Players are reaching over the tall glass because they're big and getting the high fives. There's the big guy, Peter White. Brian Wiesenberg hands it off to Brian Boucher, who had a heck of a third period the other night. Yes. If you don't re remember. Break the animal by a Lewis in the crowd. He was the fans' choice this year. Look at that. He is lost. He had been to a seventh game before, but lost. And he said, not this time. I know one place I'm not going now. The dressing room. Absolutely. <laughs> Dangerous down there now. You know why? They got a sauna in there and a, and a jacuzzi. You could wind up in that jacuzzi, Steve. <laughs> Well, we're glad you're sharing with us at a late hour on Comcast Sportsnet. We're happy to bring you a rare, rare occasion, a championship play by a home team. They did it. They won it in six. They were the best team in the league all year, and they proved it in the playoffs. And now they're doing the ring around the rosy at center ice. <laughs> well, let them enjoy it. We're so glad that you're with us. Gene Hart, along with Steve Coach, it's been our pleasure to bring you about 20 or more Phantom games, including those in the playoffs, and our last two at St. John's this week. Guys, this has been going on for far too long. I've been trying to solve this crisis since I was mayor of Philadelphia. And since I've become governor, it's gotten even worse. Please, can't we all get along for the good of the state? Okay? Good. Here we go again. The rivalry continues.
The center ice, Ty Fedorik up the left wing. Bats it deep past his man. Tried to step past Kuyper. And then Bratton hammered Nick Kuyper in the corner. Kicked away back to the left point. Seidberg threw it on goal. That's deflected right out in front. They score on the rebound. Back over to Fedorik in the left circle. He fires it home, and the Phantoms take the 1 0 lead. You got motion. All the motion off of the rebound came to the left of Anderson. Anderson went with it. So the guy that had the puck on the opposite side of the ice is Todd Fedorik. Watch the shot from Seidenberg. There goes all the motion over here. Here's Todd Fedorik over here. He's the guy that's most important because he's got the puck. Watch Anderson. He comes off of the pipe, and that's just enough time for Todd Fedorik. Now, this is very important. The Todd Fedorik is a left-handed shot. The puck falls right at the foot of his stick. And look at that shot. Way up into the right-hand or left-hand corner, that's a heck of a shot to give the Phantoms a 1-0 lead. He had four goals in the regular season. Now he's got his first in the playoffs. Todd Fedora gives the Phantoms the 1-0 advantage. Now we got a scrum just inside the blue line. Career coming up. Now that he has finished his junior career, the other goal scorer in the first period, Coatsy, a guy that isn't counted on to score a ton of goals, but uh, happy to get him every time he has a chance. You tell him that he's not expected to score goals. Go ahead, tell him right there. I can tell him because he's down there. Yeah, I'm right. up here. Yeah. There he is. Long way away, Timmy. <laughs> Todd Fedora. Talk a little bit about that first goal because it uh, it got the Phantom started here in the second period. It was just a, a puck went up high to Dennis and uh, he shot it. Uh, it was tipped a couple times. It came into my pads and bounced right to my stick. I just threw it at the net. And I are you shooting at a spot there, or when you get a chance to just turn and wheel, you're just... No, I knew the goalie was down, so I just tried to get it upstairs, and that's where it went. You see the puck goes right into my body there and falls. I was more impressed at the fact that you reacted like a goal scorer by knowing that you got Anderson down, that you've got to go back upstairs. I mean, that's just a reaction, isn't it? I guess so, if that's what you want to call it. It's sometimes half of everything is luck. Well, I'm trying to give you a little bit of a <laughs> pump here. Go with me on this, Fridge. Go with me. But I, I, you got to stay humble, Coltsy. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk, oh. talk a little bit about these two teams because uh, we said earlier, this is the 28th time these clubs have met in less than a year. So in this format, you're getting a chance to play a team within your division. You know these guys real well by this time. Yeah, we, we've played them enough times in the last couple of years um, that we know exactly what they're going to bring. They know exactly what we're going to bring. It, it basically comes down to a, a matter of who's going to work harder and who wants it more. Mike Mike Brown is out of the lineup. Um, he is uh, one of their physical presence. Uh, does that change Norfolk in any way just by not having that muscle in the lineup? No, that doesn't affect our, our game plan, who, who they have in the lineup or, or what we have, what we have set to to play against this team and we just we try to uh do that to the best of our abilities it doesn't matter who they dress well he had four goals in the regular season todd fedorik scored his first playoff goal in the second period there todd appreciate you stopping by thanks guys two nothing phantoms with the lead we're in our second intermission and stay tuned we've got more coming up are arguably the most physical team in the AHL. They take their share of hits, but often dish out much more than they take. And their brand of hockey has been a recipe for success so far this season. I think it's huge. It, for me, that's what I make my living at, so I think it's really important. But for a team, teams need to have not just one or two guys be physical or, or get in the, in the fisticuffs and that stuff. You need everybody being physical. Guys that are skilled, if they're physical as well, it just it elevates their game and it, it, they bring more to the table. And in, in our league, it, it helps them get to the next level. We want to pursue the puck and we want to make teams uh, get pushed off the puck and we want to win a lot of battles offensively. So uh, certainly an area we've tried to concentrate on this year. 
physical brand of hockey is nothing new to the city of Philadelphia or the Flyers organization. Year in and year out, the Flyers still bring that approach to the rink. After all, this is the city that produced the Broad Street Bullies. You know, we can wear other teams down, their skilled players with uh, with size and with strength and, and with physical play, and I think this organization it had success with that in the past, and I think that the fans in this town appreciate that, but not just uh, the physical play, but the hard work that goes along with it, and I think the, the people of the city really identify with that, and it, it seems to work for this organization. I just think it's uh, the way the organization has just been brought up ever since I think the Broad Street Bullies and everything like that, it just... Uh, just heritage. I think that uh, you come in here, you got to play tough and physical in order, in order to win. I think that's what you got to do throughout the league, don't you? And the Phantoms have been winning. They are an impressive 13-3-2 in their last 18 games, helping to take the sting away from leading the league in penalty minutes with Peter Vandermeer, the individual league leader by far this year. I think we had a problem early on where we were taking too many penalties and they weren't good penalties for the hockey team. You know, we want to take penalties that negate scoring chances. We want to take penalties while we're trying to be physical as far as in, in between the whistles and finishing our checks. Try to go a long way to negate some of the unnecessary lazy penalties or retaliatory penalties. And I think we've done a better job of that as of late. Some of those, the, uh, the physical uh, penalties, you know, uh, you know what you're doing. Sometimes the little wires in your head touch and, you know, and something happens and you, don't, you can't explain it, but uh, you, you, you got to be pretty smart. You know, as, as things have changed, there's getting fewer and fewer guys that actually do get in fights on a regular basis. And I'm, I'm one of those guys. I, I'm out there, I'm an emotional guy. If somebody does anything to one of my teammates or I think you can help, help the flow of the, the game in our favor. I got no problems doing that at all. As long as you're dishing out more and you're taking, it's a lot of fun. Well, Peter Vandermeer has already had a little bit of fun as he's been mixing it up in the first period, but it's 2 nothing on the scoreboard in favor of Binghamton. Stay with us. You saw we were, we were just in a commercial break when it was really Ray Emery who started really going at it and then out of nowhere, over the pile, Neil Little into the end zone. Touchdown. If he'd get him a football, he would have scored from two yards out. I'll give him a 10 on that one. But you can see Jim Vandermeer and McGratton going at it because he was hitting guys when guys were down. He was standing over top of them. But this was a long, long, it, tough fight. That was the protracted fight because it seemed like the fight that never ended. But then you, then you, then right after that, Peter went, and this is Emery and Peluso. You know, Emery got the jersey over Peluso's head, and that's really what fueled the fire. When you get a goalie who wants to duke it out, you know, everything's going to break loose. You see there, McGratton, he's standing over the guy suckering somebody. I don't, you know, that doesn't take a lot of courage to do that. That's when Jimmy stepped in. But when you're standing over somebody when he's not even looking at you, pounding away at him, that does not take a lot of courage right there. And that's when Jimmy came in, Vandermeer, and then that's when Neil Little does look like a butterfly dive. But like I said, we still got three minutes, 50 seconds. Jim Vandermeer, McGratton going. This all started with Emery. But this is <laughs> this is a little bit old-time hockey. And it's only <laughs> fitting that some of my ex-teammates happen to be in the building. I think that's uh, But this is... Uh, I didn't really see how this all happened, but McGratton, I don't think he wants too much more. It looks like he's hurting. It looks like Jimmy Vandermeer might have hurt him. Might have hurt himself. But there are two tough boys. Well, let's take a look at how this thing started to erupt. Is, uh, now you got Peter Vandermeer who's getting involved. This is still live action. We were, we were going to go to tape a little bit ago. And, you know, back when we started tonight, you heard Santa Claus saying, hey, it's happy holiday, behave yourself, no fighting. Forget the presents next year. Forget the presents next year. Santa's not showing up. Well, Peter Vandermeer went after McGratton again. But Emery, he's still skating around. He wants somebody. I've never seen a linesman try to uh, break things up like that. Dave Brown actually pounded on the back of the combatants. And now Peter Vandermeer still going at it with Ryan McGratton. And McGratton's not done yet. Well, you know, 
That's the thing. They got a hold of Vandermeer. McGrath's got one arm loose. You got to make sure you got both arms held. Yeah, well, this is. See, this is this is definitely sending a message. Yeah, it's pretty strong, loud and clear. Now there's some. Now there's some talk at uh, uh, Emery's going on with Peluso. We still got three minutes, 50 seconds left. I don't know what goalies are going to be involved because Neil Little went end to end to get involved in this fight. So, you know, he's going to be tossed. And I never saw a goalie like Ray Emery go at it. Emery was one of the main combatants when this fight broke out. And Neil Little really giving it to Emery and company. Well, this uh Maybe four to one right now, but they're certainly sending a message. And the Phantoms do have the players. They're still deep in the bench to continue this.